This week on Three Sides of the Coin, yeah, that black box, that's Mark Cicchini sitting in a hot tub in Southern California. We've got no guests this week. We talk about artists that have similar style of merchandise, like Kiss and Aerosmith, and why that's the case. It's a train wreck show. I don't know why you'd want to watch this one. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate it. Three Sides of the Coin. Talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. looking for official Three Sides of the Coin merchandise, T-shirts, hoodies, and more? Visit shop3sidesofthecoin.com. We ship worldwide. Hey, Three Sides of the Coin. I, I got a stack of Vegas chips here. I'll bet that we don't make it through this whole episode before something craps out internet wise. <laughs> Mark is uh, in chips. sunny Southern <laughs> California, right? I'm, I'm about eight hours south of you, right? In yeah, so probably much, much warmer and nicer. He his internet connection there is probably not very uh, good. Upper sixties. Um, there's going to be some delays in the conversation here, so we will just try the best we can. Well, you can, I can hear you fine. Yeah, except you are very delayed. Well, let me stop video. See, let's try that. How do we turn 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 off your video and let's see if that helps with it. your better audio it stopped okay let's try that there we talk go. to us that's that's off now with the video okay i think that's going to be that, better. Is that any better yeah, yeah much better much better okay. so you can still see us right, good. and and great i mean at this point it's, it's just me and i'm the beautiful one <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tommy's so, supposed to be here. He said he was in traffic and he'll be a little late. I don't know what that means. So we're just going to go without him. Um, Who's this Tommy you keep talking about? I have no the guy clue. that we're going to fire. Really? We're going to fire this guy pretty goddamn soon. <laughs> I honestly don't know what he does to contribute to this show. Nothing. That's the whole point. Like when when when, he's, when, he's, when you when you have a band he, member who doesn't write or or practice or rehearse, eventually you fire them. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? You know, he's out there combing the high schools and junior highs. I mean, what, what the hell? Oh you know? God. <laughs> um. So we have no guest. Once again, which is probably a good thing because if it was like Rob Halford, he'd be like, "Fix your goddamn router, guys." Um, so we're we're just gonna wing it. Mark, Mark, you had well, kind of our, an interesting our, discussion. Uh, did our friend did our friend get a hold of you, or are we on for next week? I gave him the e e my email and I said, "Let's schedule it for next week," and I've heard nothing. So. Okay. Um, we 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 honestly have about three or four musicians who want to come on, and it's just been like, well, I can't do it yet. We're waiting for the album to drop. My publicist doesn't want it done yet. So, you know, until they get around to it, then you get us just talking. Um, Although uh, I did see that we had some uh, some love for that. I mean, again, I, I think there's a, a certain and a good number of people who just like when we sit around and, you know, talk about kids. And, uh, oh, I, 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 I like doing that, too. I like that as well. Um, there's not a lot going on, of course, with Kiss right now. But you brought up something interesting about and, and this will this will hap this will get us a, a comment about Aerosmith and Kiss. <laughs> Yeah, we're so, at what, like the three minute mark, and and, and we're going to get the uh, we're gonna, we're, we're going to get a com yeah we're going to get the comment of the Aerosmith mention at the three minute mark this week. Yeah, I um, brought something up to Michael because I'm a big fan of both, and as I've said on this show many times, 
I could just as easily, you know, be comfortable doing an, an Aerosmith podcast or you know, I love them as much as I love Kiss. The big differences, especially in the, you know, the collecting aspect or, you know, Kiss is, uh, you know, a whole lot more to collect. And, uh, but I will tell you, if you guys um, are fans of Aerosmith, and even if you're not, I mean, that's what we're talking about. One of the topics this week is go to their official website. You'll see some similar items. Yes. Like a and banner. Like a banner for the exact same $750, and it looks like it's made... I would say by the same company who made the one, the original one from uh, from the uh, New York City uh, pop up store. Yep. Yep. They also have bundles of their 1974 second album with t shirts and stuff like that. But one of the things that's that I was talking to Mike about is I see some of their shirts and stuff are. They're comparable price wise to Kiss, but a couple of them are cheaper. And I'm thinking to myself, is there something to that? I mean, well, same there, company. Yeah. So Kiss, Kiss used to be on um, Epic Rights, which was Live Nation, which was Signatures Network, which is where I first started working with them. But a few years ago, Epic Rights got bought by a huge merch company called Bravado. And Bravado is actually owned by Universal. So are you following? Universal Music owns a merchandise company named Bravado. Bravado, and they've been around for many years, um, bought Epic Rights. So when they bought Epic Rights, they bought, oh, here comes, here comes Tommy. Um, yeah. <laughs> the guy we're going to fire. Um, when Bravado bought Epic Rights, they got all of the contracts for all of the um, artists that had merchandise deals with Epic Rights, one being Kiss. So if you go to Bravado's website and look through their clients now, Aerosmith and Kiss are with the same merchandise company so that means the same company is responsible for tour merchandise um licensing stuff for products and retailers e-commerce sales websites all of that the same companies behind them which uh, you know and i can tell you when when i was working for the merch company Yes, you would see a lot of the same. The merch company might cut a deal with, and we'll just use this banner manufacturer. I mean, there's probably a third-party company out there that manufactures these banners. Bravado went out and said, hey, we'd like to have you make banners for our artists. And here's our roster. And they say yes, and they cut the deal. And then Bravado goes back and pitches to all their artists. We'd love to do a banner for you. And some of them will say yes, and some of them will say no. But at the end of the day, what you end up with are pretty much the same kind of quality banners with just a different design on them. And they'll put together the same sort of e-commerce packages. Oh, we're going to bundle a vinyl release with a T-shirt. And we'll create, you know, so for the merch company, it makes a lot of sense. They can They can leverage the same merchandise across hundreds of artists and just change the artwork on it. So that's what you've been seeing, Mark, is Aerosmith's got a lot of similar stuff to Kiss. Yeah, they also have some different things. Um, I noticed they're, they're, a matter of fact, I, I, because I tried getting her on the show, she said she'd come on, but she didn't. But Cheryl Rickson was selling jewelry um for paul stanley at least at one time and i noticed that the aerosmith website has a jewelry unlike this one 
but it's, you know, it's based on the toys in the attic. You know, if, if anybody's familiar with that album cover, there's, you know, little rocking horses. It was the, the toys that were in the attic and, and you can buy, you know, each individual charm. And I just thought it was kind of odd that, um, you know, they, they never did marketing like that. Um, I, I seem to think that they're following Kiss's lead um, for a reason, you know. Um, but then again, they, I doubt that has anything to do with Stephen and Joe. Much like I don't, I don't think a lot of this day-to-day -day stuff has anything to do with Gene or Paul. This is the company trying to use the licenses that they have to create more content to make as much money as possible. And I support that. Because at the end of the day, whether you want to spend a $1,500 banner or a $750 banner, that's up to you, you know, because if those things were flying off the shelves, they're just going to keep selling. them. Well, the first thing I'd want to comment on, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily go far as to say Aerosmith is following Kiss. I think what, what you've just got here is a merchandise company that's got hundreds of artists that goes out to every artist and says, we've got this new product available. Would you like to do it? And, you know, in, in a lot of cases, they say yes. Kiss says yes. Aerosmith says yes. And then it comes down to how do they want to design it differently? And, and to some extent, how do they want to price it differently? You know, the, the, the merch company is going to come back and, you know, they're going to have, Here's the cost. It's the same cost, basically, whether it's the Aerosmith banner or a Kiss banner, the same cost, unless they're doing something uniquely different, like, oh, we're going to put, you know, diamond studs on one banner and the other one doesn't. So it reduces the cost a little bit. Um, but, you know, I would bet you're, if you went through like Bravado's roster and spent the time, you'd probably find a number of their other artists that also have the exact same banner. So I wouldn't say it's following Kiss's lead. It's following the merchandise company's recommendation. And, and honestly, what the merch company does is they, they pitch it. You know, a lot of times it might be an individual one-off product pitch, or if it's before a tour is starting or before an album release, the merch company, and which reminds me, I've still got one of these merchandise kiss packets that I found from Sony Signatures that we could go through, puts together a whole presentation of a variety of merch items that they would suggest to the artist that we could do. We can do frisbees, we can do banners, we can do t-shirts, we can do this perfume, we can do these tennis shoes. Here's this whole product line. And then the artist is going to sit down and go, yes, 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 no, yes, no, 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 yes, 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 no, but could they do this differently? And that's kind of how it works is an artist is just going to sit back and go, no, I don't like that product idea. It might be a hugely successful product for somebody else, but, you know, and, and, and that pitch I don't know in the case of Aerosmith. In the case of Kiss, that pitch was usually made to Gene, Paul, Doc, and Tommy would have been in the room, especially before Tommy was in the band. Tommy would have been in the room as well. It would have been uh, a couple of the big executives from the merch company, a couple of the, of the artists, the designers from the merch company, and it would just be, you know, like renting out a hotel ballroom for an afternoon, and it's a long meeting with the band to talk about tour merchandise and new themed merchandise and all this other stuff. Does Aerosmith have um, Steven and Joe sit in that meeting? I don't know. It's probably at least managers. Um, it could be personal assistants um, that speak on behalf of the artist or know enough about what the artist is going to like or not like that they can, thumbs up or thumbs down something. Um, but it, it's, you know, as much as we want to give Kiss the credit for taking the lead on all this stuff, I wouldn't say they are. They are just one of many artists 
that have been pitched the same merch ideas and they just happen to do it. They might've done it diff slightly differently. They might've had, cause like the, the Aerosmith banner that you could get from them now, like you said, is $750. It's not 1500. Like the one that kiss was just selling. No, Why is here's, it a couple of things. here's a couple of things. I, 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 you know, I would certainly give your, what you just said, more credence over what I said. However, that was based on an observation because I noticed that Aerosmith, and I don't remember, I know it was years ago, but not terribly long ago. I, I wonder when they did switch to that. I would guess it was after Kiss was already doing it because as a fan of both bands, all of a sudden I started getting emails from the Aerosmith camp um, right. And I, that's when I noticed that, and keep in mind, the kid, I, I already was buying stuff from the KISS site. Um, I noticed that, oh my God, they're having the collections just like KISS did. And, and the images, much like KISS, how KISS uses whatever, a dozen separate images. So is Aerosmith. They're using the, you know, the first album cover and the Get Your Wings and the Draw the Line, you know, and then they put little things around those the themed images you know what i mean to make a different sort of shirt yep. or a different kind of thing so i mean i i noticed those things were similar the one thing i did notice and again this is this doesn't hold any water per se there was no 1500 dollar banner and why we're talking about that um they're, they're claiming on the kiss site that that it's sold out sold out which I'm going to, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. I, I, again, you know, I run with a, a lot of the hardcore collectors and, and the guys who will spend that kind of money on something. And I don't, and, and again, this doesn't mean anything, but I don't know anyone who bought one. Um, they all had the same kind of reaction I did. Well, it's nice, but it, for 1500 bucks i could go buy a concert poster from 74 for that you know what i mean right um, yep and that's where most of the kind of people that are in this sort of game would put their 1500 dollars you know um matter of fact I, there's another auction website right now that's got costume pieces for sale for just a little bit more than that you know what i mean wouldn't you rather buy a costume piece than i mean collectors would so that's kind of where I'm getting with that. And again, this isn't to naysay it. It's just, it, it, I just find it funny that it was, you know, taken off the market pretty darn quick. I'm not well, saying you know, they didn't sell it. Um, I certainly we, can't make claim that I know everybody who's who would be interested in buying them, but I know enough people and those people know enough people. And, you know, to the, the, the conversations I have, we don't know anybody who bought well, you know, we what we don't know is how many did they initially produce and 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 who is producing it. So meaning, first of all, is it a company that just has a factory that mass produces these or were they sort of handmade one at a time, which will limit the amount that could reasonably be produced? They may have only made 100 of those banners. Just I because say, of, I think it's going to be. I think it was going to be a made on demand person. Yeah, it might have. It might have. It might have been made on demand. It might have been made on demand with um, a, a maximum order of a hundred of them or something like that. There, there, there's a lot of different ways these types of merchandise deals can can get done. Um, you know, the difference between somebody who can mass produce it and, you know put together 5,000 pieces, no problem because they've got a factory or they've got a, somebody in, in China that is manufacturing the products for them. Or is it, you know, it, and, and we've seen this with Kiss and a lot of artists. Some, somebody makes some really cool handmade items. The band loves them. The band works out a deal. But that person is doing it all by themselves and they can only make you know, a hundred of these over the next three months. I mean, it takes a lot of work and we, we don't know when it comes down to that banner, but like you, I will take everything with a grain of salt when it says sold out. 
because it might be it sold might be. out. It might be sold out now, but in two months when they found somebody who can mass produce them for maybe a slight, slightly less quality, they might be back in the store. They might be back in the store for less money because they, they figured out the fans really like these, but they couldn't afford them. So let's go find somebody who can mass produce them cheaper. Michael, we talked about this on the show before. I We have a mutual friend, and I don't want to talk about it here, but that's how I found out years ago. I mean, this is during the Psycho Circus Tour, where I believe it was you. I could have swore he said it was you. We were talking about the ticket windows and those things. And yeah. you, you, I think you told them whatever they sold, whatever it was, like 100 of them, if that. And, and at the time... You know, those were in those. Is that what you have? Is that what you have with you? You said you have the brochure for the uh, some of the, the Sony signature stuff. Yeah, it's pro that's probably that's definitely probably a product in there or it's definitely a product that was in the merchandise catalog that you would get for free at shows and stuff like that. Yeah, because our, my friend said, hey, I talked to Brandvold and he said, hey, you know, these things you just assume because, you know, all these brochures are going out to all these shows and every kiss event and all the hype that was behind them in 98. And to hear that those ticket wheels only sold whatever, you know, a paltry sum, you're surprised because I was, I, I thought, Oh my God, I got to get one of those before they, before they're right. all sold out. And, per and, perception and like, is reality. <laughs> yes. That's, that, that's exactly my point. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of that stuff. I mean, I mean, if you remember back to, I think it was the convention tour. Remember they sold those autographed, lithographed poster artwork. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know it was, and it was a beautiful poster, and it yes. had a big white mat around it, and the mat was autographed. Oh well, here's the thing. All they all they did was like get the band to autograph like, and I remember this like. 500 or a thousand of the mats the the white mat was all that was autographed so when these were sold they just produced it by getting the poster dropping the mat on it framing it and selling it to you a number of years after psycho circus had long gone nobody was buying these things anymore but we still had the autographed mats and i'm like let's just throw something else in the autograph mat you've got the, what, what's valuable are the four autographs on this mat. We could put any poster, any print, any photo we want in this, and we've got a whole brand new product. So, you, you know, the, the, the ticket wheel was sort of the same thing. All of those, what appeared to be very limited edition, very expensive matted frame displays, there were not thousands and thousands of those things made. There just weren't. I mean, it, it was sort of like, all right, we'll make, We'll make 50 of them. And when those sell, we'll make 50 more. And at some point, somebody goes, all right, the demand is wore off. And, you know, we can't get any more tickets from Ticketmaster. Screw it. We're done with this product. Um, it, but, but again, it, it goes back to don't believe sold out means sold out. It, it, it could very well come back in a slightly different format different price um especially if they feel like there's enough to and and by they i'm not saying kiss i'm saying the merch company because the merch company is the one that's making all these decisions the merch company is going to go back to the band and go hey we sold out of this product but i think there's enough demand we could keep doing them and we found somebody who could make a slightly cheaper version are you guys are you banned aerosmith kiss whoever okay with this new version of it and we sell it for a little bit less some of them are going to say yeah we don't care others are going to say no you know that's going to piss off people who bought the original one whatever um the merchandise world is is a is a crazy world that merch company and and we're speaking of bravado but every merch company kind of does the same thing they want to leverage the same product Across as many artists as po as possible, with slightly different changes. Maybe it's a slightly different fabric. Maybe it's a slightly different design. And especially when they come up, when the merch company comes up with a 
program, a product program that works, a la, oh, let's reissue vinyl, let's do color vinyl, the label will handle that, we will create a bundle with a long sleeve shirt, a leather jacket, a turntable mat, guitar picks, whatever it is. You know, we've seen all of that crap that's been done in KISS. They, they'll go to all the other artists and go, hey, this program was a huge success for this artist and this artist. We think it would work for you. And here's what we propose. Let's take this album. Let's do this. We've mocked up some T-shirts. We've mocked up some merch items, some pins, some some coasters, whatever the crap, the trinkets and trash are. And they just try and roll those programs out across every single artist. And then it it's it's even better for the manufacturer of those products because now not only are they creating shot glasses for Kiss, they're doing shot glasses for Aerosmith, Def Leppard's on Bravado. They're doing shot glasses for Def Leppard. You know, all the same style of artists get the same kind of product from one manufacturer that drops and, and you know, as all of us are in business, from a manufacturing standpoint, the more you can manufacture, the cheaper it gets to, to produce it. So it's, you know, there, 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 there is a good reason why you're seeing Aerosmith and, and Kiss looking the same. Talking? Are you talking? Are you talking to your maid? <laughs> no, my wife. He's on Glory <laughs> Hole Island right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no video. There's no video. It's true. Exactly. Plausible it's true. deniability. We did no, but Tommy, honestly, we did have video before you got here. Mark is sitting in a house. It was just, it, it was just such a a. a Poor network connection that I told him to turn off his video for fear that we would just lose Mark from frustration. I don't doubt that at all. I just like busting his balls because he does it to me all the time. It's because you do it to him all the time. Who started it first? Mark started it. Kind of mutual. (laughs) (laughs) Who's on first? I think we both said, I think we both insulted each other almost at the same time. And and you both got excited by it. And We're now like, you travel. Fun. Now you now you travel and sleep together in hotel rooms. And now you and now you're dealing with Beavis and Butthead. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it it was it it was fun working at the merch company because not only does the merch company represent rock artists, they represent country artists and pop artists and and you name it. And you'll see a lot of similar products where you go. Oh, that Tim McGraw thing, that's the same thing Kiss is doing. Or that's the same thing Ozzy Osbourne's doing. You know, or or that's the same thing Third Eye Blind is doing. I mean, the same products get moved all around. And and honestly, fans really don't know. I mean, unless you're a fan of, like you, unless you're buying stuff for Aerosmith and Kiss, most Aerosmith fans probably aren't going to even um, notice. They're not even going to notice that Kiss was doing the same thing. And Kiss fans won't notice that Aerosmith is. And then right. if you go look at what Def Leppard is, again, it's it's very rare that that fans are ever going to notice, let alone care. Because, again, at the end of the day, a cool product is a cool product. And who cares who else is doing that product? If it's cool, you like it. Well, I did notice that because because Aerosmith's tour is on hold. I just noticed a slew of new things, which tells me that I think they're going to ramp up um, the tour again, because I think if they're going to let it die, they wouldn't be trying to ramp up interest the way that they are, because they put out much like that's it's funny because just being a diehard fan of the of both acts and somebody who participates, you know, again, I buy their stuff too. Boy, do they push the best ofs and the greatest hits and the, you know, colored vinyl and you know splatter vinyl and just it's crazy speaking of which our our uh the uh, ace freely camp uh, i just saw that they're putting out <clears throat> some of the earlier records now on like a dozen different yeah like fraley's comet the debut and the sighting. second sighting 
they're, I mean, they're just coming out on mm. colored vinyl. I mean, nothing, no additional. I think it is it a gatefold, maybe. I can't remember. Well, all I think was if they really wanted to hook people in. And again, I don't know what their arrangements are managerial wise, but man, th throw the fans a bone. Throw throw one bonus song. I'll tell you what. Here, here's the reason I say that. Do you remember when when Judas Priest um, redid their thank you, baby, redid their catalog? Thanks, baby. Um, yeah, thanks, baby. <laughs> you know, um, he says that is because he doesn't know the, her name. Will you <laughs> stop? <laughs> So, uh, so. <laughs> he forgot her name from the very first date, and for decades now, he's just been calling her baby. Yeah, so. it's probably Derek. So, but they, they they included, which was weird, but they included like bonus tracks on each one of the discs. But the thing is, a fan, as a fan that drove me crazy is they, they put, like, songs that were left over from Turbo on, like, Hellbent for Leather. I mean, granted, you were getting two bonus songs and stuff, and I'm like, put the eras, the right eras, on the correct albums. Otherwise, to me, it just sounds silly. But I'd rather have the effort, though, where they put in bonus songs. That was what was so fun in the 80s was collecting all the Iron Maiden singles. They always had Japanese B-sides and, and even like Buck Cherry. Uh, uh, you know, I love the fact that the, you always know the Japanese record's going to have one more song. So you had to buy the Japanese version to have everything. By the way, Tommy, I didn't get to see them, um, uh, Buck Cherry, because we were leaving early the next morning because as Mike stated at the beginning of the episode, if you joined in late, I'm in San Diego right now. My son's getting married this weekend. So I'm in Southern California and um, uh, Buck Cherry was in Detroit Sunday night. And uh, we ended up getting a hotel by the hotel. We ended up getting a hotel room by the airport. So in the morning, cause we had a very early flight. Why we didn't have to in, get up. At, why were they in um, Detroit? Buck Cherry played Sunday night. Oh, I thought they were playing Sault Ste. Marie. Sault Ste. Marie. No, that's up North. They well, made know, me, but that's they, that's where the last show was with um, um, Skid Row. Oh, so that, that makes sense because that was like last night, wasn't it? It was a couple. No, it was Saturday. Not, so not they, in Sault Ste. They played Sunday night by themselves without. without oh, okay. I didn't know that part because Bo Billy was asking and I'm like, because but we we're I I knew about the the other show and I'm like dude you can't even get him to drive to Ann Arbor how the hell are you going to get him up there he doesn't what, like to leave now? his house huh what was that what oh did you ask Billy about me no Billy asked me about you he wanted he was hoping you'd come to to the show but I thought we were talking about the one up north. And I said, you well, can't even get eight hours away. I know that. And I'm like, you can't even get him to go to Ann Arbor. How are you going to get him up oh, there? No, that's the part. That's the part that bummed me out. They were literally 20 minutes from my house oh, on well, Sunday. Way to go. Well, no, because we were, I wasn't at my house Sunday night. I was, I was stood, I was by the airport. I across the street. Like you, like you couldn't leave the airport and go to the show and then drive back to the airport. Dude, it was just, it would be it's way not, too defeat the whole purpose. Tommy, it's not Vinnie Vincent. Mark would do that for Vinnie Vincent. Or pretty did. much Floyd. Oh my God. <laughs> What's happening that we can't see? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's giving us the middle finger. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, so no, that, yeah, I know. And, and it's a bummer. And now with them done with, uh, at least for now, with, um, skid row you know now the wheels came off for those guys because eric has parted ways with them so who knows what's going to happen yeah but lizzie hale is is filling the last in four, yeah the last four that's, shows that, that's pretty freaking that's big news that's that's huge yeah yeah i mean for those those who don't know literally as we're recording this on on march 27th um it was announced that eric was leaving Skid Row um, basically because he, it was just too much for him to do all the traveling for touring and focus on his health and getting better. 
which I totally can understand that. That you got to put that first. Yeah, you put that first. So, um, so they they parted ways, and and for the four remaining shows they got here, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm is is going to be singing lead for Skid Row. That's fucking. That's that's huge. That'll be neat. Yeah. So, anyways, but that's too bad. You'll see Buck Cherry again, though. You, they'll be out this summer, and they're they're phenomenal as always. And I do like their solo shows uh, more so because they play longer sets, so you get to hear those songs that they cut out all the time that are the ones that are sometimes some of my favorites. Now that I don't like their set list in general, but there's just certain songs they'll always throw in when they're the headliner, and I miss having those extra songs. So. Tommy, you're becoming as big a rock star at Buck Cherry shows as Buck Cherry. How do you figure? I saw that. It was awesome. I mean, it was like, did you just recently go to what a show in Milwaukee or something? No, I was in Green Bay for Green for Green Buck Bay. Cherry. I saw at least three or four three sides of listeners posting photos of you taking photos at the show. They were like, Tommy Summers was at the show at Buck Cherry. There he is. It's just like. You're you're the fucking rock star right along with Buck Cherry. So be be careful if you start taking the spotlight from the band, they're going to get rid of you. Yeah, well, I can see that, but I don't think that'll happen. So they don't have to worry about that. But I must have run a lot of three sides love. I probably ran into at least a dozen of our fans at the Epic Center. So also too, if you guys are in the Green Bay area or live near there, if you ever want to take a trip to go see a show, the Epic Center is un, just outstandingly cool. It's worth going to. It's a great venue, huge space, plenty of room. The, pl- the place was sold out, and you could still at least walk a little bit from one place to another. But yeah, people were into it, and uh, they had a very, very good show there. Cool. So what you're saying is that the epic was epic. Yes, the epic was epic. It really, I wish we had a venue. I mean, we've got some beautiful venues here in Minneapolis, but there's just something really charming about the epic center that we don't really have here. And I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just a great place to see a show. You know, it's like the stage is high, but not too high, but high up enough that you could be the guy back by the soundboard and you could see the band really well it's not like you're right behind someone else's head although the one downside is is that the audio guy who was running sound for for skid row uh someone threw up all over him oh yeah yeah that made him that made him a happy crew member a lot of drunk people there oh but it's wisconsin so you know that's what they do they are power drinkers ouch yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but great show, nice people. It's always great to see, you know, Kevin Jepsen was there and and just so many, so many nice, wonderful listeners. I got to meet some really cool people. So thank you guys also for taking the time to come up and say hi. Appreciate it. Did you make fun of the Packers when you were there? Uh, No, but, but um, uh, Kelly, the bass player went to the, went to um, the Lambo? Lambo field i'm like why would you go into the devil's house and he's like i just had to see it and then at the end when everyone's supposed to go go pack go on some video at the end of the tour he yelled skull so i was like <laughs> you know and i told him i said what you should have done is you should have bought a bunch of viking stuff everyone autograph it and throw it out in the audience like andy beersack did with his Bengals memorabilia at a pittsburgh show and everyone in the Pittsburgh show threw all this stuff back up on stage. It's like, God, you got to love football. Hey, did you guys get uh, anybody for Kirk Cousins to replace him? Um, we have uh, Sam. No. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Sam Darnold from, yeah, from, 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 from 40, 49ers. He was the 49ers backup quarterback. He's been signed. But the Vikings are like going after... I don't know what's the guy's name, JJ McCarthy from well, there's, Michigan. There's two or three oh, that right. are, are oh, there's two or three that are good. And I I almost think that that's like the distraction move. I don't think he's number one on their list. I think I well, I think JJ just won a national title here in Michigan. Well, yeah, I mean they they I all I see is that's who they've got their eye on, and they're gonna try very hard to trade up to be able to draft him. Now, does that mean he will immediately be their starting quarterback, 
or is he going to be sort of the long-term franchise quarterback that they're going to work into the system? Who knows? Uh, I've, I've given up worrying about this stuff because it's just going to be a disappointment at the end of the season anyway. Well, so for any of you people that way, are, guys, huh? By the way, by the way, I got an email from the Detroit Lions this past Please week. Please come back. Please come back. I'm not kidding. I about fell out of my chair. So much so that I called the guy. I'm like, where were you fucking assholes back in 2020 when, uh, you know, when the world was going to hell? I mean, because I talked about that on the show before. I mean, mm-hmm. of course, we're going to get some people pissing and moaning. But, hey, fuck it. It's our show. We do whatever we want. So, um, yeah, so. Um, look, we just gave you a good 45 minutes of kiss. Give us five minutes of NFL. All right. So, well, um, and, and I was just going to say for all of you people that are NFL fans, whoever your team might be, hope that you guys have had a good off season so far with free agency, because I'm thrilled with what the Vikings have done. You know, I'm, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what the Vikings come out with for next year. I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving, um, in this last week, everybody that's making fun and by everybody i mean like defensive nfl players making fun of the ban on the the hip tackle drag oh. down whatever that it's called they're like what the fuck are we are we supposed to just like tap them on the shoulder and say gotcha i mean how do you how do you not tackle somebody by wrapping their arms around their hips that doesn't make falling? any sense to me yeah <laughs> that, just, that doesn't make any sense it's it's like the, the the NFL doesn't want them to play football anymore. No, they don't. That's, it'll be it'll, exactly in, in, it in a few years. It'll turn into flag football on the NFL field. Pretty much. <laughs> it's just like I'm not a fan, dude. Dude, you re- you're really making rug- rugby look like a man's sport now. Totally. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I did see they changed they changed the kickoff thing, right? Yep. There's yeah, I, they they I I don't know the exact thing what they did other than whatever the XFL did for kickoffs is now what the NFL is going to do for kickoffs. I don't know okay. what it is. Well, I can tell you what it is. So the offense that's going to be receiving the ball is set up the exact same way, but they said that more than likely most will have two. Uh, kickoff return men in the back if it drops into the end zone i believe they put it on the 35 yard line if you kick it and it goes out of bounds before it hits the 20 they put it on the 40 so it has to fall between the 20 and the the um, end zone and the offense or the defense cannot move towards the ball until either the ball a hits the ground or b is caught by someone who's going to return it, but they're going to be a lot farther forward in the field. So they're going to be at like their 40 uh, at the other team's 40. So they're saying that the the offense or the coming offense will be at like the 20 or something. I don't know. The whole thing sounded really convoluted. It sounds really weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw a post where actually the general manager of the Vikings just um re- drafted or just got a new kicker for the Vikings and he is a kicker from the XFL and they got him specifically because he's familiar with these new kicking rules where a lot of the NFL kickers are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. And you can still do an onside kick, but you can only do it till in the fourth quarter, you have to announce that you're doing it and that will still be the same. That won't change anything. So the idea apparently with these rule changes is there, they went, from one extreme to the other. So when they changed the rules a couple of years ago, last year, 80% of the kicks were not returned. So there's just no action on the play. It's like, well, you're here to entertain us. So that's what they're, they're trying to work their way back through it. But it's like, you're not going to stop head injury. You're not going to stop injury because it's a sport where you have physical contact. If you're worried about injury, then swim. <laughs> I, you know, I used to, uh, I, I, I coached hockey for many years and the kids um, after peewees went into, excuse me, after squirts went into peewees, that was like the, 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 they start off as mites and mites is like five and six. And then the next one is like seven and eight. And then <clears throat> when you get to like 10 or 11, 12, you can start checking. And I remember telling the, the kids literally at the beginning of the season, 
that if you don't want to get checked, the local city has a great golf program where you, <laughs> you, you can golf all you want, but and you don't have to worry about getting hit it, but hockey you're going to get hit. And, and I will tell you, um, you know, when I was when I was growing up playing, we checked from the day you started. Because how hard is a five-year-old going to hit another five-year-old? I mean, you can only get up so much speed and you're wearing helmet and gloves and elbow pads, pads and all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Again, it goes to, like you said, Tommy, you know, you can walk around wrapped in pillows and bubble wrap and you're never going to cut yourself, but are you living? I mean, right. you, I just think there's, there's a reason there. these guys are making the money they are. They're, they're doing it because they're putting their bodies through hell, but knowing right. and willingly. And that's, yeah. you know, if you want to tie this into Kiss, it's no different. Um, right. I just got done reading Charlie Watts's uh, autobiography or the, the one written, you know, that was authorized by his family. He hated touring. He did it. So much so. But he also realized that this is my job. This is how come I get to have houses and, you know, and yeah. places all over the world. And I, Hey, so in order to do that, this is what my lot in life is. And I volunteered for it. And that's just the way it is, you know? Well, it's kind of like, you know, you have so many people that are like, you got to eat healthy, you got to eat better, which I don't disagree with at all. But it doesn't mean that um, Burger King can't exist or any other fast food restaurant. You, you have to be able to have the choices. And it just seems to me like when they just start taking all this stuff away, the, the game will get so diluted that we won't recognize it anymore. I don't yeah. want anyone to get hurt. I really don't. It's horrible to see any team have someone go down. It's just, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, but that's part of why they're making them on their money they're making. If they're too stupid to save the money and they end up bankrupt like Adrian Peterson, who apparently has no money, then I don't feel bad for you. But when you got 80 million, 100 million, 200 million, so play for four years and then walk away before your skull gets crushed, whatever. I don't know, but don't change the rules to the point where we don't recognize it anymore. I'm with you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Michael, what else did you want to talk about today? And we can make this short today too, because again, I'm, I'm, I'm. In well, it's California. already, it's already, it's already been over an hour. You know, I don't, I don't know if there's, a, I don't know if there's anything more about the Aerosmith Kiss stuff. I mean, I do remember back when I worked for the merch company. Um, Aerosmith was doing a lot of stuff on their own, and they were one of the artists that the CEO of the company desperately wanted to um sign he wanted aerosmith all the <laughs> time but he that. couldn't he couldn't he couldn't get them so i i think eventually aerosmith ended up on epic rights and then like i said bravado had all of their roster they bought epic rights they've got a super roster of all bands now and you can you can go i think it's bravado.com or just google bravado merchandise you can go to their website. You can see every artist on Bravado, the merchandise company's roster. And that'll hey, he, he, get, he, he gives you a, a good idea. Maybe, maybe we can spend a few minutes on. I didn't check this out because personally, I don't care. And I don't mean to sound condescending. Did any of you guys get emails from people going, hey, Kiss scrubbed the avatars from their official site I, I don't know if that's true or not but i did get a, more than a few from different people that said there's no mention of it on their site um, and if that's i true, i i don't honestly i don't look at kiss online at all i mean there's why I, there's nothing i need to ever any news is going to be on the internet so i don't go to kiss online um but i do know that after the avatars were first announced on Sp Spotify on Kiss's page on Spotify, they changed the band photo to the avatars. And I don't know, a couple weeks ago, it got changed back. No, when it was the anniversary of the debut album, they took the image of the avatars off of Spotify and put the uh, original band photo from 74 up there. And and yes, I got some messages and I saw comments from people like, oh, that's it. The avatars are over. They took the photos off. I'm just like, no, 
No, no, that, that means nothing. I mean, I can change photos. Uh, like I have control over the Wasp Spotify page. I can go in there and change the logo and the photos on that anytime I want for whatever reason. I want it to be a photo related to a tour. Great. If I wanted a photo related to an album, great. It means nothing. And frankly, I would bet it was the record label that did it and not Kiss. I don't think Kiss gives a crap. I mean, it's the record label. Um, the, the, the Kiss is scrubbed and the avatars are dead and gone. I've seen people commenting. It's like, hmm it's just another one of these fans who think they're experts in everything because something was removed from the internet. It means it's over. It means absolutely nothing unless you want to spend the next six hours of your life reading into this and evaluating it and you got nothing better to do. Go for it. Did you see um, that Roger Daltrey made a, comment about the who being avatars yeah it doesn't surprise me i didn't see the comment but it wouldn't surprise me i mean it it's it only makes sense for bands of that level abba the who kiss i'm sure there's been offers or discussions with aerosmith and bon jovi and anybody who's a mega superstar band those offers have been pitched to them and why wouldn't a band like The Who, who's, who, who's like, they can't keep touring. They just can't. They're, they're, they, you know, they're, they're older than Kiss. And well, that was the concept. They, Roger said something like, you know, if you want to come and see us play, don't expect this to be like, you know, 1975, where I'm spinning right. the microphone and, and you know, um, Pete's jumping up in the air. He goes, he said something about wait for the avatar show. And then you can yeah. see that. And you can, you can re you can relive that. I mean, again, I'm just going to say in general, the whole avatar thing is I don't really care one way or another. It's up to the bands if they want to do it. And if a band has the ability to extend their career and definitely through that, God bless them. Go for it. Do the best you can. If I like it, I'll partake in it. If I don't like it, I won't, which is the exact same thing when it comes to live concerts. If I don't like a band. I'm not going to see him live in concert. Right. I mean, well, just spend your money or don't spend your money. I just think that, that Kiss will end up on the right side of this and that more bands will follow than you would even believe right now. And there will be some that will get away with it and some that will not. But it's going to have to have that certain kind of fandom or following to to pull this off. So it'll be really interesting to see how everything shakes out at the end of the day. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, we when we first talked about this, this is a whole brand new thing. Nobody's ever done this before. I mean, you could say yes, Abaha has done it, but. It's not like ABBA's been doing it for 50 years and we've learned through their history. They've only been doing it for a few years. Right. Everybody's learning. No rules have been made. No, no history to, to, to study. It, it, it's being, the book is being written as we speak, which make, to me makes this kind of interesting and cool because anything's possible. Right. Nobody's going to sit back and say, well, no, you can't do that with your avatar. Why can't you? Nobody's tried it before. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't work. Doesn't work. We stop that and we do something different with the avatars. I mean. Well, and there's no downside because they're not the ones paying for it. Yeah. Again, it's it's not coming out of this or any band's own pocket. Another company's investing the money, doing all the work. It's all being done behind the scenes. And when it's ready, it comes out and we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and you go on with your life. Right. Right. That's pretty much it. I agree. You know. Well, on that note, you don't have to wait for the advertise advertisers for the three tards here. You can just No, we're gonna work, you know, because just so you know, Mark, 
your box right now is just a black box for you. I'm going to have fun with this black box of what sort of image I'm going to put in for you. <laughs> Works for me, man. We, we can do we can do a cartoon, um, the golden Adonis or the round Adonis. We can do some or, or or Tommy, you could do what. Tommy, you could do one of your fabulous you, you you could do one of your fabulous Photoshop jobs with Mark. Yeah, I could do that. I, I think you should get Brian to do it because he does such a great job with those uh, pictures. Oh, those the 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 cartoon Brian, the guy who did our artwork for he's, our logo. He's he's so good, yeah. man. That guy is. Yep. Yeah, he yep. he really is. I was just thinking more of the long lines of a picture of I don't know Liz feeding Mark grapes on some plush chaise lounge with his blue no, speedo. It's pretty much what we're doing. Yeah, with his blue speedo on. I mean, it's be true to fashion. It's not <laughs> like it would be something that's out of line. Feeding him meatloaf, not grapes. No, because he wouldn't do his own meatloaf communion. We have to do the meatloaf communion to honor him. You know? Sure. Maybe we should do that on Easter. All right, let's say let's say good night, Gracie. And that that says Mark needs to go to an all you can eat crab buffet. No, I want to get to the fucking hot tub. We got Is anybody waiting for you? Here. Probably not. I mean, everyone's outside. I think. So, you were you actually, Mark? Just to be clear, you did tell us you were going to do this from the hot tub. Yeah. Well, I did two re a. I couldn't because the uh, there's no internet out there. Well, because nobody there wants no any video out there. There's, they, no one wants photographic proof. Nobody wants to see Mark in a hot tub. Yeah, I think everyone does, don't they? Coming up every few minutes for some. Okay, Mark. Mark, Mark here's what here's what you got to do, Mark. When you go out to the hot tub. Have somebody take a picture of you in the hot tub. Send that to me, and I'll put that up here for the whole show. That'll be Mark, a picture of you in the hot tub. With the three sides logo. Or you at least doing the shocker. That, that can be arranged. Yeah. Just at least do the shocker that can be from the hot tub. Yeah, that would be perfect. All right, yeah, that 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 is easy easy peasy, my friend. Oh, I almost I uh, guys guys I almost forgot, and I'll 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 re-edit this as needed. We need to cut a real quick ID for Jay Gilbert. Sure. I mean, this will literally take like two seconds. Um, I'm going to say hi. This is Mike. Then you go Tommy, and then Mark. You go and Mark, and then I'll jump in and say from the Kiss Podcast, three sides of the coin. You're listening to Jay Gilbert. He wants us to do an ID and it only needs to be audio. So we don't, yeah. who cares about the video? I'll let it this out. And then oh, we'll okay. I just shot my video on this. Now. So, so yeah. I will say, so hi, this is Mike. You say, Tommy, Mark, you go and Mark. And then I will say the rest of this. Easy peasy. All right. All right. All right. One, two, three. Hi, this is Mike. This is Tommy. And Mark. From the KISS podcast, Three Sides of the Coin, you're listening to Your Morning Coffee with our friends Jay Gilbert, Jay Gilbert. and Mike. Hmm? Now, see, it, 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 as easy as this is, we should just leave this in so people see how fucking stupid we are. No, let's start it over again. Okay. All right. Hi, this is Mike. This is Tommy. And Mark. God, we are so fucking stupid. Time. You're hesitating. You're hesitating too long. All right. All right. Let's again. try this. Let's try this again. Hi, this is Mike. This is Tommy. And Mark. From the KISS podcast, Three Sides of the Coin. You're listening to the Your Morning Coffee podcast with our friends, Jay Gilbert and Mike Etchart. Weekly news for the new music business. We're a We're bunch good. of idiots. Yeah, but God. I know that. But you, you act surprised. It just, I, it still amuses me to this day. You'd think we would be professional after doing this for twelve years. <laughs> no, 
what what's what's why be professional that kind of i know rests, nobody's it? paying us a dime so until yeah. we start making money off of this you're getting idiots you're we not getting no, pros we have, yeah we have no accountability if you didn't have mark shut his camera off he looks like he's being interviewed on one of those dateline nbc shows like <laughs> we found him and he'll talk <laughs> but we can't see his face oh my god all right all right guys so homework for this week have you noticed any similarities between Kiss merchandise and other band merchandise? And don't say, oh, yeah, so-and-so's got black T-shirts, too. Duh. Like, Mark brought up the example of the Aerosmith banner, same kind of banner as the Kiss banner. Have you noticed similar merchandise items between bands? I, that's, and I don't know. And what do you think of the Minnesota Vikings this year? There you go. There you go. Or any other NFL team. We like talking. This, 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 right now, this is this is a train wreck show. Mm-hmm. Absolute train wreck show. And we're show. eventually going to get someone said it's the greatest one ever. So. I know. You're going to be like, That's laugh my really... ass off at you guys. It's like, okay, whatever. Let's, let's... If, if this entertains you, God bless you. I've always said we're no different than any of the people listening. We're all just spans. That's we're, it. we're all just idiots. Um, all right. So that's it for three sides of the coin. I don't know what we got coming next week, whether we have a guest or it's going to be another train wreck like this. Could we'll be. Pretty Could much. Be we'll up. find out when we get on zoom and hit the record button that we figure out what we're doing. Good go yeah, I, 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 bitch. I don't, I don't know why you guys still watch us. I really don't. Because um, you you do you do get to listen to Mark chewing on ice. <laughs> Maybe it's a compulsion, like people that cut themselves. I don't know. Yeah. Could be. Can we say good night, Gracie? Good night, good night, Gracie. Three sides of the coin. We're done. We're out of here. See you next week. Do you have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 315 Voices for three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.